everyone this is your instructor joy thank you for watching thank you for your nice questions comments donations and booking lessons with me today we're going to talk about car flesh uh one of the earlier book called or studien um translated in english it would be basic studies so a subscriber asked me to review this specific uh, book um so when i went through i realized what it was um I didn't study or study in book per se, but throughout my study in my youth, it was well used, so I could relate to that very well. Um, for those who are not familiar with that, I was able to find it online easily. I cannot link it because I don't know what legal issues are, but if you're interested, um, it's certainly worth to read it through. So. Uh, I also have to admit it sounds very similar to a uh, book of Dunis. Dunis is spelled D-O-U-N-I-S. When it comes, basically, this book break, this book is teaching how to work with our body in most efficient way, without um, wasting many many hours of practice. Simply by understanding our anatomy and physics, that way we know what to train and how to gain control therefore you can become a better violinist when it comes to technicalities so we're talking only about techniques here and um, he talks about importance of understanding um, your like a understanding of your finger joint when it comes to bowing and elastic movement of your left hand and so on and he also suggests a couple minutes of exercise and so on which is all great. So, so typically his um, car flesh or studio and exercise is one of those. So he, he talks about left hand horizontal and vertical movement, um, importance of the horizontal, meaning the finger falling, dropping, and um, a vertical movement <laughs> is a finger dropping and horizontal sliding, which could be used shifting or just simply in a one position. Yeah. Um, when it comes to vertical movement, it's important that you don't forcefully do that, but rather elastic movement, meaning as though the ball, uh, a little ball, when you throw it into the, um, to the floor, it bounces like this. This kind of movement should be your finger as well, like this. Yeah. Even when it's last on the floor, or it should feel like this, the weight has to be taken off. Yeah, almost like that. So um, one of these car flash or students suggests like this, you leave your second, third, fourth finger on this string like this, two, three, four, and then you move your first finger for, uh, vertically, but make sure like this. Make sure it's not slow and stiff, rather fast and elastic. And then you do the same thing, second finger, and the third, because it doesn't go as high but you should try to get as high and then pinky like that then horizontal movement um, it goes same idea but second finger sideways make sure you go back and forth the easiest way without forcing it too much with the thumb especially in the first finger and then third finger and pinky like that um, when it comes, um, there's more about that, but I'm going to just brush up quickly uh, just so that you know what, what kind of book this is talking about. Then um, about bowing. So here, bowing talks, of course, many parts of it. He, um, he explains the importance of when the flexibility of your finger joint and wrist and elbow adjustment and so on, which is all good idea and suggests like a f every part of the bow, like meaning he uses the word nut meaning the frog, middle, using the point, the word point means a tip. So like something like this from G to E string, using very little bow, and then here we're just adjusting with the wrist and the mostly the finger join. So that like this. Sorry. Like that. And the same thing goes in the middle. Our tip. Like that. So, and then he moves out about the use movement of the wrist. 
so that we know how to use your wrist therefore you can do smooth string crossings but again from the frog middle tip let's say this type of tip the like this and then it goes shift to the second position on and on um, what do I think about it? Um, in general, the ideas are great. But is it practical? Yes and no. Do I use it? Yes, I do. Would I practice every day or do I practice every day or do I teach my students every time? Yes and no. I'll tell you why. Uh, the ideas are brilliant. Um, whatever... Um, it is very hard to argue against the basics of physics and anatomy when it comes to because there's either this or not. There's no no compromise. Either your body can handle it or can't. Yeah, or you you know, there's very simple, straightforward way. So um, it is good for us to understand what movement are involved. Therefore, we we reduce the waste of time. Just like I can grab a pencil like this, or I can grab my pencil like this. Which, as you can, second time I wasted much more energy. Which the result is same, but first time I gently grabbed it versus second time I forcefully grabbed it. So of course we want to avoid that one. So that is very important. However, the downside of such exercise, I find it, uh, a lot of my students, or at least in my teaching studio, when I bring those ones to emphasize my students, young or university students, are having a hard time connecting to their pieces. So when I explain to them why it is important to practice so and so way, it makes sense to them, but as soon as they go home in their own practicing room, and then they it does not make sense or they, it or it's not it's not bringing enough result therefore they don't practice that one but rather they go back to the pieces or whatever they wanted to practice so long story short the intentions of car flesh is good but when it comes to practical practicing among students and violinists it tend to not to, not to succeed as much as the intention um, is so this is what I try with my students and it's very successful. So far has been working very well. And uh, if you are an instructor yourself or, for, or if you want to try with yourself, this is something that I want you to try as well, as it worked very well. So first, treat this book as a, a great advice, a great guidance. So read it from beginning to the end. If you want, you can try a little bit of violin, see what it is. Because the, the core, um, core, content is very clear about understanding and then learning to control every part of your both hands of course the not so good part is the repeated repetitive exercise that it's hard for values to see the connection to their repertoire pieces yeah that's where problem is well that's why a lot of modern violin students have a hard time to accept it as a daily practice routine even though it's just a couple minutes of each exercise. But if the students or violinists don't see the point of doing it, the, it could be the best exercise, but if they don't do it, there's no use. So understand first the book, and then see if you can combine those Car Flash or Student Book or Dunis, whichever this great book is, using your own repertoire, or if it's too hard to do that and simplify the or student exercise that works for you. For example, uh, car flesh uh, was student suggests that you do all, like a all, you put all four fingers and pick one finger either horizontal exercise, uh, vertical exercise. I'm doing now third finger, um, vertical exercise or horizontal exercise. So look, I've been playing violin for 36 years, and I um, I can say well, I mean I'm. I have played many many pieces and still for me the third finger doesn't get as high as second or first finger or pinky so it's very hard I mean I can keep practicing until I can raise really really high elastically relaxed which car flesh suggests 
but instead of that, um, we could simplify the step simply by just maybe just take the uh, pinky up and let's see if I can practice only the third finger. Yeah, or horizontal. So what we're doing is uh, we are making a little easier to start. Yeah, and then once there's a little progress uh, visible, then it's also a little motivating for us and for students to play. That's one thing. And instead of string crossings like uh, practicing what curve flex suggests, which is also a good idea, but see if you can use within your piece. Let's say you're practicing. So here, there's a lot of string crossings. It's not too hard for us to find difficult passages of pieces. So pick that. Pick that difficult passage, see how you can use Carl Flesch or Studian idea to improve these specific difficult passages so that the, you can apply that one right away and have the result right away without wasting other things. So instead of the, it's originally written this way, but I can take this one as an exercise. I do it at the tip and study really what part of my right arm is really actively moving, what part of my right arm is unnecessarily moving and analyze. So I just realized here the my important part is our wrist movement. So if I had moved the elbow, that was an unnecessary waste of energy. So this is what you should do. And then you do this one instead of only written, you repeat that one. So if it's too complicated, then get rid of your left and only open string practice. And see if we can do this time at the frog. Is it same? Now I'm realizing there's a much more involvement of your pinky because pinky plays almost no role, but here, Pinky plays role to balance the bow. So here, if I do nothing, the bow falls. You see? So I have to use pinky to lower that one. So here, index finger and pinky plays important one. So, so understand which finger is playing the most important one, which one should not be too active. Sometimes by lifting those inactive fingers to exaggerate or making sure those are not overly active, but active fingers, in this case, index finger and pinky, we can just put that one. And you can understand here, your wrist stays just nice and relaxed, but very little movement. It's simply just finger joint between index and pinky, and so on. So by analyzing line like this, breaking down, same approach like Carl Flesch or Dunis does, like understanding basic physics and anatomy, and therefore breaking down what is needed, what is not needed, and then just really simplifying them either by taking something out, by playing open string or skirt per fingers out, and then you can really bring it down to the main point and fix that one. And when you feel comfortable, then gradually bring back to the performance plan, either tempo or fingering, proper bowing, and so on. That kind of approach in my teaching studio with my students and myself has been very successful. My students see the clear link to that um, and also therefore they're more motivated to practice and the result is very clear. Um, as soon as in just a couple of weeks they, they get to see that if they stick to the practicing. Yeah. So I hope this gives a little idea. Um, it certainly takes time. And remember, violin practicing is not just with the violin. Just thinking about it, thinking about why am I stiff? What did I do? Just imagine yourself just trying different things. If you are sitting in an office or somewhere, just take a pencil, see when I hold a bow, do I do this, do I do that? Or when I do spiccato, what part is needed and so on. Just analyzing, it may feel like it's a little work, but certainly serve for a lot of things, saves us a lot of pain and things like that, yeah? I hope um, you get to try this one. Thank you for sending me your questions. I try to answer as many questions as possible, 
But if I don't get it as quickly as you wish, I hope you could be a little patient. I'll do my best to answer all your questions. But I hope you do still feel encouraged to keep sending your questions. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again. Please remember to subscribe and share my videos. Bye-bye.